Hello and welcome to this uh, manufacturing systems technology part 2 module 23. We have been discussing about the ways to represent ordered and unordered samples uh, with respect to combinations and permutations. Today we are going to sort of continue that and see if we can mention or we can arrive at a distribution uh, which can actually be helpful in estimating probability. The estimation of the probability was done in uh, respect of acceptance sampling. So, uh, let us say in a particular case we are inspecting about uh, n pieces and we may search for defects or non conformances in n pieces and record the total number of such defects. This is measuring quality by count of defects. In inspecting or testing n pieces we may consider whether each of n pieces does contain any defects. Each piece having one or more defects is called a defective. This measure is known as the count of defective. So, we will consistently use the following symbols n is the number of units in a sample, d let us say is the number of defective units in sample units n and therefore, the probability of having a defective which is the also the fraction defective is d by n. So, it is basically sort of a indicative of a proportion of the defective units in the sample and obviously, the number of good units as a proportion are 1 minus p or 1 minus d by n. So, therefore, exactly there are n minus d units which are good as uh, respect to the total sample size which is n. So, that is the fraction of uh, good pieces 1 minus p and then obviously, the number of defective units in a sample can be represented as n times of this fraction probability. So, obviously, d has been defined in a manner so that d equal to n p. So, suppose we had a uh, process. So, we are going to sort of see and evaluate if this so called binomial distribution which I am just going to bring in in the next slide uh, is somehow useful in the process of estimation of all these uh, probabilities given this particular situation of selecting d defectives from n. So, supposing we had a process with population fraction defective of 0 0.1 that means about 10 out of 100 samples are acceptable and for a sample size of 4 uh, there could be you know if we look at let us say a, a draw size of 4 from this overall n population size there can be either a case where all the samples are good samples. So, you have 0 defective or you have at least one of the samples out of the four draws uh, which is defective, two of the samples again which are defective, three in defective and four all four are defective. So, these are some of the possibilities which will happen when we are drawing samples from otherwise large population of n uh, total samples. So, how do we write the probability of drawing uh, all good pieces. So, obviously, this probability can be defined as just uh, you know uh, because the fraction defective is 0 0.10. Therefore, uh, the amount of good pieces or the fraction of good pieces is actually 90 percent. So, there are about 90 items in that 100 lot which are actually good uh, samples and so the probability of d being 0 now the d being you know the number of defects being 0 is basically that all the four items that are drawn are good items. So, therefore, we can just simply because they are independent of each other these draws are not dependent on each other. So, we can say that 0 0.9 to the power of 4 is what the total probability of 0 defective would be which is 0 0.6561. So, thus about two third of the time about 66 percent of the time we draw a sample of n equal to 4 pieces from the process where all four will be good samples probably provided there are about 10 percent defectives in a particular sample. Now, let us seek a probability of the second case which is 3 good and 1 defective that means in 3 draws you have good samples and now 1 draw you have a defective sample. So, what are the basic combinations of when this defective can occur? So, you have 4 different draws. So, the defective can occur in the 4th draw or the 3rd draw or the 2nd draw or the 1st draw. Okay. So, you have a probability of getting 1 order which is good in the 1st draw, good in the 2nd draw good in the third draw and bad in the fourth draw represented by d. Okay. Similarly, you can have the defective drawn in the second uh, the third draw. So, the first two are good and the last one is good again. Uh, the defective drawn in the second draw where the first and the last two are good samples and then one in the first draw and the remaining three in the last three draws are good samples. So, you can actually again represent this as you know the probability of getting good times probability of getting bad obviously, the acceptance rate is 90 percent. So, 10 percent are defectives. So, you can say the probability of getting 
three good samples in a succession followed by a defective is 0 0.9 into 0 0.9 into 0 0.9 times of 0 0.1. And similarly, the all uh, variation that is happening here is in terms of where this 0.1 is placed. So, you can see this is in the uh, third place, the second place, the first place, so on and so forth. And so, basically you can represent all this as 4 times of 0 0.9 to the power of 3 times of 0.1, which is actually represented as 0.2916. So, it is basically 4 times of 0 0.9 to the power of 3 times of 0.1. Okay. So, we consider next the samples with where 2 of these 4 draws have defective samples. So, how many such combinations will exist? You will have 2 good 2 defectives, you can have 1 good 1 defective again another good another defective, you can have 1 good 2 defectives followed by a good, you can have a defective then a good then a defective then a good or 2 defectives at the beginning and 2 goods at the end or otherwise you can also have 2 defectives at the you know 0th and the 4th or the 1st and the 4th draw and 2nd and 3rd draw being good samples. So, these are all what is needed for getting exactly 2 defectives in the successive 4 draws that you are making from the sample n. So, obviously, we can actually uh, now uh, put these outcomes together again as 6 times of 0.9 square that is the uh, probability of having a good sample times of 0.1 square which is the probability of having a defective sample which is 0 0.0486. We can do the same thing for d equal to 3 that means, the defectives number of defectives now are 3 out of the 4 draws. So, you can have you know 4 times of again the same you know as you had 3 good and 1 defective the only thing here would, would change which basically is going to be if it is 3 defectives. Similarly, for the d equal to 3 which is basically number of defectives equal to 3 and number of good 1, there are only 4 orders of sampling results, where the p probability of having 3 defectives d equal to 3 is given by 4 times of 1 good that is 0 0.9 to the power of 1 times of 3 defectives 0 0.1 to the power of 3 in an identical manner as before. So, this comes out to be about 0 0.0036. Finally, for d equal to 4, all 4 must be defective. So, you have 0 0.1 to the power of 4 defining 0 0.0001 as probability of having d equal to 4 defectives. So, if we summarize all these data points together about the probability of having either 0 defectives or 3 good and 1 defectives uh, and also 2 good and 2 defectives uh, or let us say uh, probability of having 3 defectives in the 4 draws or all 4 as defectives. The summation which will come out to be also representing the total probability or, or probability of drawing four samples from the sample of from the population of size n as all four being good which is probability of getting exactly d equal to 0 plus 3 defective 3 goods and 1 defective which is actually 0 0.2196 plus again uh, the possibility of getting 2 defectives which is 0 0.486 uh, 0486 plus the possibility of getting 3 defectives which is 0 0.0036 plus the possibility of getting all defectives or 4 defectives. So, there are actually 5 terms which are there and if I just correlate all this and write in terms of these powers this is 0 0.9 to the power of 4 this is actually 4 times of as you can see here. 0.9 to the power of 3 times of 0.1 to the power of 1 plus this actually represents 6 times of 0.9 to the power of 2 times 0.1 to the power of 2 plus 3 times of sorry 4 times of uh, point 0 0.9 to the power of 1 0 0.1 to the power of 3 plus again 
0.1 to the power of 4. So, in general this can be recorded as uh, a case where this 4 is actually 4 c 1, this can be 4 c 2, this is 4 c 3 and this one can be 4 c 4, uh, where c depicts the combinations as talked earlier. So, I am going to sort of represent all this together as a distribution, where I can say that the total probability in this case of the whole draw to happen is basically 0 0.9 to the power of 4 plus 4 c 1, 0 0.9 to the power of 3, 0 0.1 to the power of 1 plus 4 c 2, 0 0.9 to the power of 2, 0 0.1 to the power of 2 plus 4 c 3, 0 0.9 to the power of 1, 0 0.1 to the power of 3 plus 4 c 4, 0 0.1 to the power of 4. In other words, this can be represented as a probability distribution of the number of good samples plus the number of bad samples to the power of 4. Okay. So, this is actually nothing but the binomial distribution. And each term of this distribution is representing something. For example, this term represents the probability of having 3 goods and 1 defective. This represents 2 goods and 2 defective. This represents 1 good and 3 defective. And similarly, this represents all the 4 defective. So, that is how you represent the total probability in this binomial distribution. And uh, generally, you can write a generic term of representing d defectives is basically p d given as c 4 d 0.9 to the power of 4 minus d, 0 0.1 to the power of d. This is also a representative of the dth term of the binomial distribution of n equal to 4 and the p equal to 0 0.9 and q equal to 0 0.1. In general, the p d becomes equal to c n d p dash to the power of n minus d q dash to the power of d, where p dash is the probability of having a defective sample d by n for example, in this particular case and q is 1 minus p dash, which is the probability of having a good sample. So, that is how you represent through the binomial distribution, the whole acceptance sampling mode and also can estimate the number of defects in a particular sample in a certain subsequent draw, which comes up. So, this is one uh, important case, which has been described here. So, just because we are talking about binomial distribution, uh, I think it is very important and prudent for us to know about what really uh, is a binomial distribution and what are some of the characteristic properties of this distribution. So, particularly where many sets of trials are made of an event with a constant probability of occurrence p, the expected average number of occurrences in the long run is obviously n times of p. And so, n p is the expected value or the mathematical expectation, uh, where this mathematical expectation is has been a concept probably taught in earlier, uh, you know, first and second year level courses. Uh, and mathematical expectation of x, where x equal to 0, if an item is acceptable or x equal to 1, if it is rejectable. Okay. So, we distribute it in a manner. So, uh, the mathematical expectation uh, is uh, an operator which is expressed as followed. So, the mean of x, where x is basically again this uh, 0 if an item is acceptable or 1 if it is rejectable, that is how you have placed the function. So, mu of x is basically defined if x is continuous as integral x f x d x, uh, x varying between minus infinity to plus infinity and in case of discrete distributions, in fact, this binomial distribution that you are talking about is a discrete distribution. You can define it as x p x sigma x varying between 1 and n. And uh, so, basically we will apply the second formulation to sort of calculate the mathematical expectation. So, uh, in the interest, interest of time, we will close this particular module, but in the next module, we are going to bring up uh, two different formulation strategies, where in one, we will calculate what is the mean of a binomial distribution using this uh, definition here of the, uh, you know, in case of discretized x uh, of a mathematical expectation or mean of the distribution. 
and then also calculate or try to calculate the standard dis dis uh, deviation of such a discretized distribution. So, that we are enabled now to uh, maybe based on that estimate things like number of defectives or even number of units which are actually defective so on so forth uh, in a uh, particular you know acceptance sampling plan. So, thank you so much for this particular module.